decision where you think that kids can't learn by scrolling much? Well, I, I think learn. I think learn. Sir, you think it's sad that this is being taken down? Do you think that it's sad that it's being taken down? Why is it sad for you? What what is a monument to genocide um, being removed? I mean, we everything's named centered around here. We have the fort. So so why is one statue? Why do you feel that that's history being taken away? And who is John Sutter to you? What is the what does he mean? Mm -hmm. Are are you aware that he enslaved the local native peoples? No. Yes, he did. Yeah, so that's why we've been um, calling for the statue removal because his history represents one of, of genocide and he was actually not, um, you know, very, uh, although although he's been glorified here within the Sacramento area, his history here is, is pretty sorted for the local native people. Uh, my name is Morning Stargali, and I am Ajumawi Band of Pitt River. And um, the coalition that I'm working with is SCARS, the statewide coalition against racist symbols. Great, thank you. So, uh, um, I guess, uh, could you give us some background mm -hmm. about um, this statue, the, the John Sutter statue there in Sacramento? Sure. So, the Sutter statue is placed in front of Sutter Hospital, which is adjacent to Sutter's Fort. And um, it's only been there for 33 years. Uh, and, you know, the local Native American community in Sacramento, um, consisting of Nisanan, Miwok, and Maidu peoples, um, has always been, you know, um, against the, you know, the placement of of this figure um, that was very visible. It was, um, they had tried um, to, to have it right there at the fort um, that didn't work out. And so it was placed in front of the hospital. It was gifted to the hospital. Um, and so I think that, you know, just in conversations that um, we've had over the last couple of weeks, you know, there's, there's just always been a strong, um, resentment um, to the statue um, being here and in the last couple of weeks um, you know there's there's been a lot of pressure from you know the statue removal efforts that are happening across the country and uh, and so we had decided to have these community conversations um, the first of which took place last night um, and these were community conversations around um, who John Sutter was, you know, telling the truth um, in history from, you know, from our indigenous perspectives. And so we had one conversation that took place yesterday, one conversation on Sarah that will take place today, and then a community conversation on Columbus, which will take place on Thursday. Likely and so um, be around at this past Saturday, we held our we event yesterday, and then that on was Monday morning, planned um, to have I had a conversation actually right in reached front out of to state parks the state over park. the weekend. I'm sorry, right in front um, of the and statue. Just said, hey, um, there's not very much room right on the sidewalk like, area, um, and you know the attendance the is and going so to be. I checked in with state parks and said, "Look, we're planning to have this event. You know, just wanting to know." Um, wanting to keep you all aware that this is happening, this is happening, you know, in um, coordination with local tribes and the local Native community. Um, we do have an annual event called Honored Elders Day that takes place every year, and Honored Elders Day was canceled this year, um, but that area is, you know, the, the entire area, the California Indian State Indian Museum um, is right across the street also, um, across from Setters Ford. And so just trying to be, you know, in, in good relationship with, with folks in the local community. We reached out 
Um, they were extremely receptive to the conversation, said it's definitely needed, that they know that there's a lot of work that they need to do um, at the fort. And so they, um, and so they, they invited us, you know, and said, no problem at all, come and set up. Um, and then we re started receiving calls on Monday and they said, hey, um, it looks like the statue is getting taken down as of today. Um, so I, I was able to drive over there and film um, the statue removal. You can find it on APTP Sacramento. That's Anti-Police Terror Project Sacramento is where um, I live streamed from. And then Black Zebra Productions, who's also um, been recording a lot of the actions here in Sacramento, they showed up. Um, we had a, a pretty sizable crowd. There were a number of community members that showed up. Um, Calais and Ajini was able to show up and, and take photographs. And so she's created um, a, a nice little video of the removal and you know, a, um, a photo collage of community members that were there. And um, so yesterday really was, you know, uh, more of a celebration and also, um, you know, acknowledging the healing that needs to occur. Um, that this is really one step in many steps ahead that we're also pushing for Sutter Medical Facilities to change its name. Um, I, you know, that's definitely going to take a longer push, but, um, but I, I am, you know, confident that they are, are hearing our message and, um, and will be receptive to it as well. Yeah, thanks Morningstar. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to have time to go to the celebration yesterday. And uh, what I was really struck by were all the speeches that were making connections to this statue and just the <clears throat> incredible uh, continued glorification of all of these figures throughout, you know, California, historical um, mem memory, and especially the K-12 curriculum. I was wondering if you could speak to that, uh, to our audience about, you know, even though we're in California, we're perceived as progressive, we have this ethnic studies curriculum coming in, the governor's apologized for the genocide, we still have this really horrific dehumanizing curriculum in a lot of ways. Sure, so yeah, it's actually this Thursday that will mark the one year anniversary of um, Governor Newsom's apology to California's indigenous peoples. Um, but what we have said, you know, since that day that the apology was made, that the apology needs to come with action. And so if the apology is not going with action, then it's just lip service. And so um, it was a year ago that there was a coalition through the poor people's um, movement, the, the campaign efforts that were taking place here in Sacramento, where we had a number of events. There were events happening every week at the state capitol. And so one of the actions was that there were a group of, of folks from Poor People's Campaign, Brown Berets, um, AIM, um, and environmentalists from throughout California. And they went into the state capitol and they actually covered, um, covered the statue, the Columbus and Queen Isabella statue with a parachute that had the four directions on it. And it said all nations on it. And so there was one person that was arrested from that. And from that, we had created this coalition of SCARS, of the statewide coalition against racist symbols, um, and have been moving forward you know, with the removal efforts. Um, when it didn't seem like folks were very receptive to it um, within the state, one of, one of the um, suggestions I had, and I, I had reached out to my tribe about it, was that um, we get tribes on board to write tribal resolutions. Um, and, you know, through the process of, of submitting tribal resolutions that the tribes would be engaging with the state in, in state consultation to have the statue removed um, because it wasn't, it wasn't accurately, <clears throat> sorry, I've been using my voice a lot the last few days, um, that it wasn't accurately representative um, of California tribes that, you know, Columbus had nothing to do here. Um, and so that was part of the efforts also is that 
yesterday, um, both the assembly um, and um, there, there was a passage of, of a bill that is removing the Columbus statue. Um, and so we look forward to that happening in the last few days. To answer your question about the education piece that um, yes, many of the statements that were made about built, you know, the California mission curriculum, that's something I experienced with, um, with my children where my fourth grade son um, was you know, told that they would be taken to a mission for a field trip. And I just told this teacher, like, absolutely not. Um, you know, we, we can go and visit the nearby roundhouse at the nearby state park. Um, that's where I'll be taking my child on this day, but he's absolutely not going into a mission to listen to these lies that are continuing to be fed. Um, but it is hopeful. I, my, um, my daughter, who is a kindergartner, she was on a call with her teacher yesterday and um, she's, she's in summer school. And so we were talking a little bit about it and my six-year-old was really excited. And she's like, we're taking down statues this week. And, um, and her teacher was like, absolutely. Let's talk about why we shouldn't have statues to people that don't deserve them and people that did really horrendous things. And she's actually following the Black Zebra Productions and following the actions online. And so that was really hopeful to hear that we are now in a, in a time and place um, where there are, you know, not, not all, but there are some educators that are listening to the messaging. And, um, and there were a number of young people that talked about, you know, the, the need, um, for that further education, that they were the ones educa educating their teachers, you know, at that fourth and fifth grade levels that the teachers really don't know. Yeah, I was, I was really moved by some of the youth speeches um, yesterday as well. And, um, I, I, you know, I'm also curious about, um, you know, the, the ho your take on the hospital's kind of uh, preemptive move to remove the statue. Um, I, I, you know, it seems like, um, so, and then also the message they put out, it was kind of like painting this picture mm -hmm. as if they were doing it for safety reasons because they were afraid of you know, dangerous protesters. And, mm -hmm. um, and so in a way they're kind of, and even, even the state's um, statement about removing Columbus, you know, it kind of soft pedals the issue a little bit in my mind by just describing him as a polarizing figure. I'm just mm -hmm. curious on what your take is on, on these kind of preemptive moves and uh, as opposed to um, doing it in consultation with Native people in a more collaborative way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was disappointing for sure that the hospital statement was that this was um, in the interest of public safety um, and, you know, not recognizing that, you know, I purposely had the event page posted through um, APTP Sacramento. I've been working with Anti-Police Terror Project Sacramento over the last two years that I've lived here. And so um, APTP is working and, and I um, co-lead the Healing Justice Committee. And so that's providing, you know, services to families that have been impacted by police violence. When the action started, um, you know, all across the country, um, that, you know, that first Wednesday, we were out and held a vigil um, for George Floyd, and then we followed it up with having, um, you know, trainings in terms of cop watch training, street medic training, know your rights trainings, um, really trying to be able to provide that information to the people to make sure that they're keeping themselves safe on the ground. And so that was intentional in terms of, of being in partnership and sharing that information through APTP Sacramento. And so for them to say that it was like, you know, this negativity around like, oh, people are just gonna come in and, um, you know, and it's a threat to our patients, like that was not at all the case. Like we know that throughout our gatherings, you know, I've had um, my six year old daughter at many of them, um, we know that, you know, we're, we're being very careful. Um, even last night's gathering, you know, we provided food, we provided 
water and drinks. We provided masks and hand sanitizer and we brought chairs and it's very much, you know, a family gathering where they want to paint this picture that, you know, we're just there to, um, to cause destruction when really they're the ones that have caused much, you know, destruction and, um, that, you know, that we're all healing from in many ways, um, through what has taken place at Setters Ford, through the toxic legacy of gold mining, um, and, and through, um, you know, these lies that are, are being taught and forced on, um, not only ourselves within public education, but on our children still in this day. Yeah, and so I'm wondering if um, you can also kind of tie, uh, talk a little bit about Sutter's place in this gold rush narrative um, for the audience members who aren't familiar with it. Um, you know, it's again, tying it back to this genocide apology that the governor did, did he, you know, he was pre uh, presumably just uh, relating it back to what happened during the gold rush. And there's been all this recent scholarship about, um, you know, really declaratively calling it a genocide, but still there's kind of a cognitive dissonance in um, addressing the genocide denial in all of these different um, historical texts and way history is memorialized, especially at Gold Rush. So could you talk a little bit about that kind of mythological Sutter that exists here? Sure, yeah. So the Sutter that exists within Sacramento and the larger Northern California air you know, area is really, um, you know, seen as, as this heroic pioneer that, you know, paved the way we have Sutterville Road and we have, um, you know, Sutter's Mill and Sutter's Ford and, you know, the Sutter Hospital um, and medical facilities, you know, throughout, throughout California. Um, and really, you know, Sutter was, you know, as a person, he was, he was a scam artist. He left Switzerland, left behind his wife and five children. Um, he applied for Mexican citizenship so that he could acquire land. Um, and both him and, and James Marshall, you know, when the, the quote unquote gold discovery took place, they, you know, they tried to hide it. Um, from everyone and and it was leaked to the news um, but he you know he ended up um, dying you know pretty much bankrupt and and penniless um, but he was not a nice guy like it's these are his friends accounts that talk about you know really um, what what an evil person he was you know they write their own you know journal passages and um and letters state you know how you know what what an awful person that he was in terms of um how he made um native peoples work at the fort that he made people eat out of pig troughs and um you know worked them you know, for, for endless hours that he made promises of payment, but that he didn't pay them, that he was, um, you know, raping young, young women, um, young girls, at, you know, the ages of, of 14 and younger, that, you know, young children were being kidnapped, that villages were being attacked, um, you know, while people were, were sleeping peacefully and he was, you know, helping to lead these massacres against California Native peoples. And so it's not, so, so it was interesting because I, you know, arrived to the hospital and right away I just saw like all these looks of very confused and very upset and angry, mainly white folks. And they were just like, this is erasing history. Like, how can this be happening? And I'm like, really? Whose who's history are we talking about erasing because where do we see any prominence of Miwok and Maidu and Nisanan, um, you know, names or, or anything that pays, you know, that respect to the tribes that have existed here for thousands of years. But you're talking about a statue that was here for three decades and saying that removing it is erasing history and somehow taking away 
um, from them. We had people driving by honking that were like very angry. Um, you know, it, it, it was interesting for sure to, to be in, in that environment. And um, I was going to say, if you do go to view the APTP live stream of that event that Morningstar did, you can um, see a few scenes of Morningstar being very diplomatically trying to educate a few people. I was, I was impressed on how, on how diplomatic you were in doing that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't trying to argue with anyone. I wasn't there. I'm like, you know, it's it's happening. There's nothing that they can do about it. So I'm not here to be, um, and never am, you know, there to be confrontational with anyone in that sense. That you know, but it, it was it was very funny that there was there was folks that were um, extremely upset and extremely there that we were, you know, there um, finding joy and having it removed. Yeah, and what, what I find interesting about these arguments that were that statue removal is erasing history is when you actually ask these people or these folks who are saying that what they know about the history, they, they clearly have a skewed view of it. And in a lot of ways, I, I feel like these statues are part of what obfuscates, you know, our understanding of history in a lot of ways. Um, well, I guess, I guess we're uh, running out of time with you, but I was wondering if you could kind of um, go back a little bit and and go back to your work with the anti-police terror project and you know the statue removal here is actually um kind of a culmination of a lot of really awesome solidarity work i've i've been able to you know observe a little bit of i, I was wondering if you could describe that relationship um you know with the indigenous justice part of this um overall police brutality um, activism that's going on here in sacramento for sure so aptp um originally was founded in Oakland, and it was founded around um, the death of, of Oscar Grant, um, which took place on New Year's Eve in uh, 2008, and, um, or I'm sorry, 2009, and prior to Oscar Grant's death, um, one year earlier, there was a young Native man that was killed in Oakland on New Year's Eve, um, his name is Andrew Maupin. And so through that year that Andrew Maupin had been killed, um, I, I was asked to support, um, be, be one of the people that had come out to support his family. Um, Andrew's grandmother is, is Justine Maupin, um, who many will know as really one of, of the pillars within the Bay Area Indian community. She was a veteran of Alcatraz occupation. Um, and Andrew was a father. He had, um, he was a father of one and had a child that he was expecting on the way. Um, he had a ticket for, he had a warrant for bar fare evasion. Hmm. $400 ticket that he didn't take care of. He was shot in the back by Oakland Police Department. Um, the officer Hector Jimenez that shot him um, is still has is known to have also he shot Jody Woodfox um, the following year a young black man um, and then he he is still out in the streets I've heard reports that you know he is out there when when people are out protesting in the streets and um, and it sounds like you know there's been some reports where he's he's you know definitely um, being very combative with people that are out there, you know, peacefully. Um, and, and so, you know, in making that connection, and, and then we know the following year when Oscar Grant was, was executed um, by our police, um, you know, for the entire world to see, you know, this has been now for, um, how old is my son? He's, he's just turning 12. So this is, you know, really a 12, um, 11, 12 year effort that we have been engaging in, in work around um, police terrorism. And so when one of the co-founders, um, Asantua Boykin, she moved to Sacramento and um, I had moved to Sacramento. And so we were working at that time on the AB, um, sorry, I'm thinking of AB 275 because we're working on that, the AB um, 395, the Let Us Live bill. And so 
that was the bill, you know, that was really being pushed by families that have been impacted by police terrorism um, in, you know, um, in not having a, a don't shoot first policy and in having, you know, that there are alternatives in, in terms of not non-lethal weapons, um, you know, that, that can be used. And so, and, and having a police mandate on that. Um, so we've been working over the last two years. We um, just, we did help hold an event last year that centered on um, indigenous solidarity and black liberation and, um, you know, really talked about the connections. I talked about, you know, the history of California laws and policies about how many of these laws still exist and are extremely paternalistic. Um, in regards to policing, you know, we know that through the California mission system that it's been over 250 years through, um, you know, enslavement and incarceration and confinement of indigenous peoples. And, and we know that that took place, you know, starting with the missions, the California mission system and continuing on to reservation and rancheria confinement and boarding schools um, and that era. And so in the advocacy work that I do, when we talk about system impacted youth, I say that 100% of our youth are system impacted because of this history um, and because of how this has continued um, you know, throughout generations. Um, and so, so when I had, had moved to Sacramento, it just really made sense in terms of continuing this advocacy, um, working in support. I, as an indigenous person, um, can't, I'm in a place where, you know, I've, I've been doing this work and there's an understanding that I am following black leadership um, and, and that we are on stolen land, um, that we are guests on, on Miwok lands here. And so APTP always opens with a land acknowledgement. They always have, you know, an opening and recognition that that black and brown liberation is bound together and that it is really um, all of us getting free. So yes, we are in a moment where we, um, you know, with George Floyd's death on camera, um, you know, we're, we're out in the streets and, um, you know, we, we are participating in actions, but we are very much ensuring that people are being kept safe. Um, and so even that following, I think it was that following Monday, we had an indigenous solidarity event where we had asked local tribal folks to come out and, um, and it was really beautiful and it was very well received. Um, you know, folks were saying like, yes, indigenous folks come through. And I know that there has been, you know, some, I've, you know, I've seen like a lot on social media and throughout, um, you know, different actions that there has been been some tension because we don't ever want to be, you, you know, and I'll just, I'll just name it that like when folks are saying, you know, we matter to native lives, you know, saying that, you know, my response to that is that we stand against appropriation within our own community, within, you know, working on mascot issues, um, you know, we talk a lot about cultural appropriation, and that's not ever anything that we want to replicate. And so we don't say, you know, the Native lives, um, because we don't want to co-opt that, but that, you know, we, we can use Native justice now. We can talk about Indigenous justice and how that relates within our communities without um, co-opting this moment and how that relates. But I, but I think that there has been a lot of solidarity efforts, you know, with the Confederate statue removals, with pioneer statue removals, with the Columbus statues coming down, that we see that these are monuments to genocide, that these are, you know, statues that very much represent white supremacy. And so when we say tear down white supremacy, like we, you know, that is the physical tearing down of these statues and monuments that should not have been there in the first place. <clears throat> yeah, thank you for for uh, weaving that uh, for us that narrative. It's it's been really remarkable for me to watch anyway. Um, as someone who's new to SAC, um, it, it seems uh, unprecedented, and at least in the last ten years that I've been working with Native communities. Um, I was, so I think I think you need to go. You've got tons to do. You've been doing a lot of 
community work. Um, Jackie, do you have any last questions for Morningstar? Uh, no, I think she did a great job covering so many of the issues and I think it'll be wonderful to edit that in, weave it into the discussion. And uh, yeah, no, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And then hopefully we can um, reschedule the show about, um, you know, defunding the police and what that will look like and, uh, and have that conversation. So look forward to it. All right. So thank you for thank your time. You. Morningstar. Yeah, I apologize that I didn't realize, um, you know, this week would be as crazy as it is. Just Well, it's so it's amazing what's happening. I mean, who could have known, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, you know. I mean, it's a terrible price that we've had to pay to get to this point. And, uh, but, uh, but it's, um, yeah, it really is amazing what's happening right now. So it, it really is amazing. We've had two out of the three statues that we called for removal, um, you know, two of them. One's down, one's coming down, and one's on its way. So, um, and and there's you know more that we're identifying, um, you know. So lots of work ahead of us, and it is a, a moment for sure um, where a lot of the work um, that has been done over the years, uh, you know, we we are seeing the 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 fruits of that labor for sure. So thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks Have a great day. So you too. Bye.